Hello and welcome back to another end up with our video. Today we are talking about the potential for these three back to back to back systems. Uh, the first of which is moving into California as we speak. The second of which will follow right behind and the third of which will develop right behind that. So uh, today we are looking at the National Weather Service as well as a couple other sites because uh, Pivotal Weather is experiencing a uh, server problem, so sorry for the inconvenience today, uh, but obviously I have no access to Pivotal Weather if their servers are down. So starting off with the National Weather Service page, we do have winter storm, winter storm watches in California, winter weather advisories in California and Montana. So the NAM is showing this storm in its entirety pretty much uh, most of the snowy side at least with some snow in Montana moving through throughout the day today and then a low pressure system moving into uh, California bringing snow and heavy rain to areas even as far south as the border with Mexico eventually moving into the Rockies where we could see moderate heavy snow in Oregon California Nevada uh, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, maybe even Arizona, and New Mexico as well before the storm eventually lurches out into the Great Plains where we could see uh, snow, sleet, and freezing rain develop in parts of uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and then the back end of the system forming in the Dakotas, Nebraska, and then eventually into Minnesota where this back end of the system is going to be the most significant portion of the system and that is where we could potentially if this system uh, does intensify uh, we could look for blizzard conditions because this is that type of storm but at the moment uh, the NAM is keeping the storm relatively weak so we don't have to really worry about that so this is weather.us which I haven't used in a very long time but uh, this is the only other site besides pivotal weather that I can use for the European model uh, sufficiently so let's just take a look here and I do have to click like this uh, it doesn't let me slide as I usually do so you can see here uh, as our storm moves onto the coast of California we have plenty of heavy snow and uh, this kind of divides things up uh, like the weather channel does where we have uh, light snow, moderate snow, and heavy snow is darker blue. So moderate snow in parts of the Sierra Nevadas and into the Rockies and then eventually out where we could see uh, moderate to heavy icing in that dark red in parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nebraska, uh, parts of South Dakota, and a kind of double whammy in parts of Minnesota as well. Uh, we're also starting to see, if we go back a few slides here, uh, some of that heavy snow starting to mix into the equation here, as well as these pinks, which is thunderstorms. So thunderstorms are possible. My doc just showed. That's pretty funny. Uh, so thunderstorms are possible with this storm. Of course, uh, we have that Gulf moisture starting to flow in from, of course, the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, as well as that cold air from Canada and, and eventually we will see those thunderstorms shift into our second system which will bring potentially some snow to areas such as Chicago, uh, Detroit, C Cleveland, Buffalo, maybe even into Boston and there is potential there uh, if that first system is strong that we could see snow even down to potentially New York. Uh, kind of a similar situation to winter storm oakley in that setup but there's also a back end to this storm as well that will bring some more snow into areas such as new england then we have the potential for a third system to maybe form into a nor'easter and if there is enough cold air we could see a significant snowfall potentially in the i-95 corridor but now that is a lot of speculation but the GFS is showing that scenario, so we have a pretty strong first system, 993 millibars at peak before moving out of the country, and then we have that second system which intensifies pretty quickly at 989 as it leaves the east coast, and then that third system 
does gain a lot of strength and has access to plenty of cold air and we can see a potentially rapidly intensifying heavy snow producing nor'easter and i have seen totals from that from this specific gfs model close to two feet now that is very uh overkill of course but it does show that that is an option now uh, with a lot of the temperatures that are going to be seen uh, over this weekend in parts of the Northeast, many may think that, you know, winter is over. But there is the potential here uh, for many areas in New England, the Northeast, maybe even the Mid-Atlantic as well, to get snowfall during the month of March. I kind of put the cutoff of the end of most heavy snowfall, at least from Boston south around St. Patrick's Day typically because then we start to see that consistent warmth and the only way that you get you know heavy consistent snowfall in the northeast after typically after you know the start of meteorological spring which started March 1st is that setup system then nor'easter which is what the GFS is showing here with that Second system, this system here being that setup system, bringing in that cold air. Another setup system to the north, bringing in even more cold air. And that just brings the jet stream lower. It can collect a lot of that moisture that's on tap in the Gulf. And then it just rides up the coast and you get that very strong nor'easter. But that is a lot of speculation. What do you think is going to happen with these three storms? Comments in the comment section down below. And again, sorry this video is a lot longer than it should be. But uh, weather.us is not the best platform for the Euro European model. That would be pivotal weather. But uh, thank you for sticking with me today. I know uh, this is a lot longer than it should be. So uh, without further ado, uh, have a great day. And I'll see you guys next time.